Hey YouTube, you have Leonard here. Green guys and gals, days with my stepsister, Gimai Seikatsu. We're here, we're live. Episode number 10, Hopping Right into this reaction. Again, for everyone who actually watched, which was a lot of people, like the episode 9 reaction did very well on YouTube. So, greatly appreciate everybody, those who watched. And it looks like people actually even watched my read through the commentary, which I'm shocked by, based on the analytics. I was like, huh, interesting. But nonetheless, <laughs> we're talking about on Twitch. I hope I don't do a video that long again. Um, that's my hope anyway, but last week's episode was easily the best of the season and again for all the reasons we talked about but just to summarize quickly this one thing the whole Nichan Saki Yuta relationship has me so worried and it's not because she's decided to give him up and become a brother and Yuta's crushed by this what hurts me is the fact that again Saki's doing this because she feels that she has to and she's putting up a facade. She's locking away feelings that she has, having not really explored or talked them over with Yuta. If they had earnest conversations, acknowledged them both liking each other, and then made conscious decisions to not do anything, I think that'd be applaudable and perfectly fine. Perfectly, perfectly fine. But the issue is the fact that, again, Yuta has feelings, and now he feels crushed, and he feels unresolved. Saki has feelings, but she's locking them up, and she's putting on a facade, just like she did in the very beginning. Like, the Saki that we knew through most of these episodes, it was just a front, because we know that she changed from middle school, or at some point in middle school, and she started becoming more adult-like. The black-haired, short-haired Saki that we see in the flashbacks changed as a person to become the Saki that we know today. And she's done another iteration change with cutting up the hair, locking away the diary, and tossing the key. It's just one of the things where it's just like, I feel so bad for these two. I really, really do. And I don't see this going well. I just feel like this is going to be... Next two episodes are going to be depressing. It's going to be down before it gets up. That, that sounds weird. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Days with my niche are... That's, that's diabolical. I don't appreciate this. I don't appreciate this at all. I love Amelia. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> that is the most earnest... ReZero episode 18 is the definition of an earnest conversation. That was honestly the most earnest conversation of all the anime. It just didn't end the way people apparently wanted it. But it was a very earnest conversation and it did indeed end with I Love Amelia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess on the note, let's 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 hop into this reaction, bro. Smash that like button is greatly appreciate. It. We're gonna begin. Oh my gosh, that was funny. Synchron, you stole the day. And of course, everyone follow me on Twitch. Link the search box down below. We're doing my live reactions. Come through. We're going to begin. We're going to start this one in five, four. My thing is freezing. Okay, redo. In five, four, three, two, one. Subtitles. Always the subtitles. I guess we'll talk about the cultural festival. <clears throat> ah, Maya. I'm sorry, seeing Saku with the short hair just has to be shook. It does, right? I didn't even realize that was Maya speaking initially. I really didn't. What errands? Mm, I don't appreciate this man's gaze. She's not into you. Be gone. Be gone. If he breathes. Hmm. 
That's what I used to think. Ah, oh, gosh. How behind am I in Cuckoo's? Like two chapters? Wait, what? Uh, after we can watch the YouTube video of why she got a diary, the reason was wild. Wait, th so we get explanation as to what? Oh. I feel like when I clicked on that video, the why she got the diary, I remember seeing that when we read yesterday. Not yesterday, last week. I thought it wasn't translated. No, no, we read this, but there's actually like a video that the Arthur did. That explains why the diary. It had captions. Oh. Because I remember clicking on the video. But it was just in Japanese. So I didn't realize that it had captions. That's my bad. Yeah it took me a second. But yeah I remember now too. It took me a second. I have zero desire for Spanish. If I see Spanish again, I'm going to break my computer. This is for work. Uh, parent teacher conferences, good times. Now talk to your daughter. Talk to your daughter, please. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, does she want to go for Utah? Oh. Wholesome reasoning. The mom has never given me reason to ever doubt her. Anytime I try to doubt the mom, she always gives me like, she always gives it straight. If I hear Oni one more time. Oh. The mom is so nice. Dang. Like, you're busy too. You can tell she's also tired, by the way. Part of the issue is that she's available, but this is usually when she sleeps. And Saki looks sad.
Dang. And now I feel like Saki to try and fix things when it's tell everybody that we're brother and sister. I could see that happening. Oh. Huh. I mean, it's not like, to be fair, it's not like Saki accepts his father as her dad. It takes time. It takes time, but it doesn't change the fact that that just sucks. That actually hurt. Because the mom is just a nice person overall and she's trying her best. That sucks. Hey. Tag team. Up. Oh, my favorite place. Can I be honest? Not even, I accept the idea. Because he's never on screen. We accept the mom more than the dad. No, I know exactly what James means. I know exactly what you mean. Yep, exactly. Okay, so 100%, they're going to, like, try to tell people so that the mom has to go multiple times. Mm. Yeah, because she's getting no rest then. Oh, I don't like this, though. I like this, but I don't like this. I think I like it more than I dislike it, but obviously I know what this will entail. Hmm? Huh? But what are these other reasons? I think it has something to do with their overall... Like, the mom aside, it goes back to her trying to commit fully to this whole Onichan thing. Is my take. Like, she really doesn't want it just to be a step-sibling kind of thing. She legitimately wants him to become her brother. Like she, exactly, that's exactly what she's trying to do. Draw that line deep in the sand. But... Yeah, Yuta still likes her hard. This is the problem I was saying before. He's not just your stepbrother anymore. Aww. Even the way they say they're family, it's just like, it leaves me feeling so hurt. Oh, that was so good. That was very good. Very well done. Mm 
Hmm. Hmm. Obviously, he knows. Nissan! For those who don't know, that's me imitating Sasuke. Well, he used to call Itachi. If everyone at school knows their siblings, it will become more complex. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I literally worry because I know what is going to happen if everyone at school knows. And if anything ever happens to these two, oh, forget it. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. And now Yuta over here feeling like he's a bad guy for not accepting the mother like that. Which, by the way, I would argue this isn't a natural thing whatsoever. I fully get where Yuta's coming from. It feels weird. I mean, guys, I'm, I have a mother-in-law now. I can't say mom. It feels weird. Dang, dang, the friend's just like, I'm so sorry. It's okay, Madu. Bruh, bruh, what is that? Mm, mm, mm. Bruh, again? Not again. Mmm. Just go without her. Uh oh. Get him off my screen. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need more hurts. Oh, I'm getting heavy roomy PTSD. Huh. This is awkward for Utah. He's both happy for, and I'm also it's kind of awkward. I think Yuta's fine with that, honestly. Yuta's always given the vibes of more loner anyway. But it seems like he generally or genuinely is just a loner. I feel like Saki like puts on the act and she's just like, I don't know. I think that's just Yuta's natural state and I think that's fine. Edgy boy. I 
Alright, I'm Team Shiori again, guys. I've come full circle. I'm back to Team Shiori. Who? That random girl? Dang. Oh, she's back. And she's tall. <laughs> the name. Name tag. He was like, how do you know my name? Are they both meeting new women, new people? He gets a new girl, she gets a new guy. It's just the two of them. Hmm. I agree. I don't think so either. And the flashback. I really do wonder how this is all going to unfold. She's trying so hard to lock the feelings away externally. But internally nothing's really changed guys. I completely agree, by the way. It's like he's just trying to throw it there. Because he's trying to also convince himself, quite frankly. That's fair. Nor should you. You shouldn't. Yes.
Just going to give the link. Hey, Emil, thank you so much. She is trying, and he is trying. I wonder what will happen for them to confess. I don't know. I truly do not know. And as I said before... This is so difficult. The only thing I know for certain is the fact that they need to talk. That's the only thing I know for a fact. I don't know what is right or wrong in terms of dating or not dating for them. Or distance versus staying close. But what I do know, which is usually the the, the safest way to handle things. I definitely know that a discussion needs to happen between the two of them. It has to be a very earnest discussion. About how they feel and what to do next. Well, to be fair, James, I will say this for Arthur's is that they always a lot of Arthur's say is like just because I wrote it, like it's free for you to understand, like take the story how you want to, like things can be written open ended. But I do agree, it is very modest. I'd be like, I wrote the story. How are you gonna tell me, man? Shut up. That's what I would say. But yeah, if they talk it out, things will be much better. But right now, they're trying to figure things out separately. And in doing so, that's where regret comes in because you don't know what could be... Or... Episode 11, brother and sister. Ah! Alright guys, let's keep this video under 40 minutes. Let's hop straight to the comments. To the Reddit. Give me one sec. At around 4,000, Arthur Mikalo's ghost commentary for episode 10 for the Gimai Seikatsu anime. Uh, let's see how long. The oh, yeah, this is not nearly as long. This is perfect. The original Arthur's commentary and thoughts on the TV animation Gimai Seikatsu. Okay. So let's begin. Conversation between Saki and Akiko. I'm starting from up here. Akiko has been working in face-to-face -face communication for many years and is good at face-to-face -face conversations. Um, and just as a reminder, Akiko being the mother. Nichan! <laughs> also, not being part of the social networking generation, she feels that text-based communication might leave something out. So she prefers to talk about important things face-to-face -face as much as possible. Yeah, I figure that makes sense. Makes sense. This includes not only the sense of not being able to convey what you want to say, but also the sense of not being able to convey what the other person is thinking. Tai Chi is busy, so I'm thinking of going f to the three-way meeting with both Yuta and Saki myself. How do they interact with each other at school? For Akiko, words were not enough for her to see the correct reactions to the question of how are you two getting on. She wanted to hear Saki's tone of voice and facial expressions and then think about what to do now. Akiko thinks, hmm... And combined with the way that she moves her gaze and her voice acting, I thought it was amazing how she expressed her emotions. By the way, I like this part because it contrasts the mother-daughter relationship between Saki and Akiko and Akiko's experience. In the original novel, this scene is depicted from Saki's point of view. Saki was inwardly nervous when she was asked, how are things with you to come? I'm good at poker faces, so I'll be fine. But later, when Yuta came home, Akiko suggested, with a genuine poker face, that Yuta and Saki should have their three-way meeting on a different day, without giving the impression that she had been lonely and said, I feel like I'm not recognized as a mother. Saki is overwhelmed by her mother's genuine poker face. Another scene that I personally found a bit interesting in the TV anime is the scene right after this, where Saki follows Akiko out to her part-time job. The relevant sections of the original novel are quoted below. Why didn't my mom say she wanted to do it on the same day like she told me in the beginning? I was confused. I can't be here now. I would remain confused and rely on Asamurakan. I was about to lose my poker face. I quickly grabbed my sports bag. I was so confused that I was afraid I would not be able to maintain my poker face. Eyes they saw too? Asamurakan, who looked back and saw me, said, It's time for me to go to work. Okay. Itadashai. Hmm. Itekimasu. Nissan. Hey, the Nissan. My delivery is already automatic. Thanks to the fact that I've been calling out to him as a habit, the words slip easily down my throat without me even being conscious of it. Kills me. From Saki's perspective, 
and Saki's self-perception, she is automatically responding. But in the TV animation, there is a clearly unnatural pause before she says, I'm off Nissan. Oh! I found this the discrepancy between Saki's self-perception and her outward or in her objective output, very interesting and fascinating. I did not notice that, honestly. I was too triggered by her saying Nisha that I did not realize that. Hold on, let's go back. That's very interesting. Let's actually go back to that scene. Let's see if I get, like... Let's see if this kills me. Hold on, I'm going to try this. Let's go. Hmm. Yeah, I kept the audio on purpose for that part. Hold on. I don't... She, so, there, there, there's just like a pause. But she doesn't say Nissan. I thought she says Nissan. Hold on. So, she leaves. I have to get to work. There's a very clear hesitation. I don't know why I thought I imagined her saying Nissan previously. Am I wrong? I feel like she said Nissan. At least I thought so. Nonetheless, do you hear the hesitancy nonetheless? Oh, this was it. When she says, welcome back, Nissan. Okay. Anyway. I think the fact that she didn't say Nissan is even... I think that's even more powerful, honestly. Is even one more sign that she's not used to this or doesn't want to get used to this. I think the fact that she says nothing's powerful. Because when you read it here, hmm, itekimasu, Nissan. I think it's kind of nice. I think it's nice the fact that, again... So she doesn't say in the anime Nissan, but there's a very clear pause... And she says nothing. I think that was done better. I actually like that much better. Alright, let's continue. Let's continue. And obviously, she answers very automatically. But this one is just like a clear dot, dot, dot. Can't say anything. Okay, difficulty of working in the nighttime. I mean, this one kind of self-explanatory, I think, but... Yuta and Saki are concerned that it must be difficult for Akiko to come to school for two days. This may not ring a bell if you don't have a family member who works at the night shift. Or if you don't work the night shift yourself. But if you have experience of... You'll probably understand what I mean. I've never work, worked a night shift. Um, I've had parents who work night shifts. And I have friends who work night shifts. And I have friends who are... You know, family heads who work night shifts. I get it. And the rhythm of life is constant. There are often no problems. But if the rhythm of life is erratic or if the morning and evening shifts alternate, the body can fall ill. Yuki and Saki are worried about the negative effects on their physical condition caused by such an unstable lifestyle. Saki in particular has actually seen her fall ill after working that way and she is worried about it. Natural. Improvement or improvement of Asamuda's cooking skills. Yuzo's cooking skills have improved since he has been living with the girls for some time. Recently, part-time shifts have not overlapped, so Saki prepares dinner on days when Yuta has a part-time job, and Yuta prepares dinners on days when Saki has a part-time job. There are many days when they left the food on the table and didn't eat to dinner together, but on this day, they wanted to talk to each other, so they decided to eat together for the first time in a while. It really has been a while. An ideal relationship depending on how you look at it. Saki has drawn the line as a stepsister, but this does not mean a breakdown of the relationship. It does not mean that they keep their distance because they cannot fall in love with each other, but rather, they are expected to get along as a family and as siblings. The way they wash dishes together while being disciplined in this way is sad. It really was. But it also seemed to be kind of a happiness. It gives me a feeling that is hard to put into words. As Yuta says, I should be satisfied with this. Depending on how you look at it, this can be called the most ideal relationship. I think. Um, I definitely agree that you could look at it that way. I see it as more sad because it's almost as if they're trying to convince themselves, guys, that this is something that they need to do that should make things happy. It's like the way he says, I should be satisfied. This should is a very suggestive word. I should be happy with this. I should be enjoying myself. 
in logic standpoint, it makes sense. But is that what's happening in actuality? I don't think Yusa's actually satisfied. I don't think Saki, from what we've seen clearly, is actually satisfied. All right, my, whoops, my study group. The Suisse High School they attend is a fairly advanced school, and even the relatively flirtatious side of the group usually studies. So when a study group is proposed, the atmosphere is not necessarily cold. It's just that they all do what they have to do anyway, with a little bit of slacking off. By the way, so it is not Asaka and Maya who easily invited this number of classmates to come on over. Maya's family is actually very rich. I'm not shocked. The income comes from both parents having extremely busy jobs, so it's Maya's role to look after her many younger brothers, which has made her quite a hard worker rather than a sheltered young lady. But, well, the house is really big. Quite spacious. They live in a very, very nice flat. Look at chat. Yeah, they're both suffering and it's going to bubble, bubble over at some point. It really is. As I said before, it just makes me sad to see it. Fujinami Summer Sale. Summer in Sale. I'm Fujinami Kaho. Now, this girl with a strange atmosphere suddenly appeared. I, James, I know you like her. I do not like her. I just say I don't like her. I don't dislike her. How about that? Sorry, no, that makes no sense. You know, it does make sense. I don't dislike her and I don't hate her, but I don't like her either. At first glance, best girl, Kaho-chan, she seems to be a simple and quiet girl, but she has a strange sense of humor towards people she has almost never met before. And if you look closely, you can see a pierced hole in her ear, giving the impression that she is not a simple person. I did not notice that. Although largely cut from the TV anime in the original novel, Yuta is beginning to make a conscious effort to expand his friendship in order to wipe out his feelings for Saki, partly on Maru's advice, which I hate. Unfortunately for Yomiori Senpai fans, the event of a simulation golf to Yomiori Senpai was also omitted. What? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Why would they cut this? I get it, timing. But come on, man. As a Yomiori senpai shipper, as a fan of Shiori, I'm sad. Yuta has never seen Yomiori senpai's romantic interest, but in the sense of coming to terms with his feelings for Saki, he dared to start trying to interact with various people from such a perspective and with such possibilities in mind. He's trying, man. Ugh. Uh, despite that, there's still something different from the feelings he had for Saki. That's how he felt towards Yomiyori Senpai, who was the opposite of Saki in every way. Here he met a girl whose sense of tension on the surface is similar to Saki Ayase's, although the original novel does not explicitly say so. She does have a similarity to Saki, can you say that? We'll talk about her in depth in later installments, so that's all for now. That makes me sad. Ugh. The shapes us form a Gima Seikatsu depicted throughout the 10 episodes. It depicted a family of four, including Yuta and Akiko, Saki, and Taichi. The happiness of the family of four and the sense of entrapment that keeps the lid on romantic feelings, the two sides on the same coin, are depicted as they are without any excessive embellishment. Whether we feel happiness or stagnation from the way they live their lives depends on our values as viewers. That's fair. It depends on what filters we are looking at things through and how we interpret them. Just as people in real life have different feelings when confronted with the same event. It is also very important in entertainment to give one-way interpretations and control the viewer's impression. And while I think such creativity is great, I think that Nagi my Seikatsu, because that is not the right answer, because that is not the essence of the attraction, they have depicted it in this way. Now, I think that this 10th episode was the one that firmly defined the nature of the relationship that had been delegated in episode 9. New relationships and unresolved ones. How will the setup here expand and converge? Please look forward to the remaining two episodes. Oh, I'm worried. As I said before, this is going to get sadder before it gets happier. I can already tell you that much. To be fair, I'm a big hater of one POV stories. It's usually causes people to hate side characters a lot or to misinterpret them. I do not disagree at all. I do not disagree. Um, I like and I appreciate, as always, I do like the author's comments. 
And I did enjoy this episode. I just feel sad because the way my brain interprets things is that they're trying to be a happy family. They're doing their best to do so. But a lot of that is very like surface level. When you dig deeper, and I give credit to Saki and Yuta because they're trying to make things work not just for them, but also for their parents, Taichi and Akiko. It's very admirable. But when you get deeper into it, Again, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I feel really sad because I feel as if they're struggling. As an example, I'm seeing so much hate towards Kuze's mom that is unnatural. People calling her trash and all. I don't understand why. But here's my conf- here's my issue with even that example. And it's actually not the example. It's just my issue with people, not you. Is the fact that in Alia, nothing suggests that the mom is trash. We get that Kuze doesn't like her for obvious reasons, and we can get that we're intelligent. Um, But it doesn't change the fact that if you think of things from her perspective, you look at how the anime is portraying her in the novel, too. She clearly gives off tragic vibes. You can understand that you, that Kuze is like, not happy with her, and also understand that there's more to me the eye that she lives a very sad life and she's not happy. So even though it's from the POV, I guess what I'm saying is that I agree with you, but I think it's stupid that people can't see beyond that because it's very obvious and overt. But anyway, with that, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below for those who are watching Days of My Stepsister. Again, let me know your thoughts. Comment in the comment. Like the video if you like the video. That was my bad. Subscribe if you like my content. It is greatly appreciated as always. And with that, I'm Leonard and I'm out. Take care, everybody. And of course, have a good one. Peace.